Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The following lecture is presented by Reviving the Islamic Spirit. Thank you for purchasing this audio CD. Additional CDs may be obtained by visiting our website at www.revivingtheislamicspirit.com. Please refrain from duplicating this audio CD as all proceeds go towards supporting future Islamic events. In alhamdulillah, nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed all praise is due to Allah and as such we should praise him Seek his help Seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds. For whomsoever Allah has guided, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. My brothers and sisters, this morning, I have the topic of the search for inner peace. A topic which addresses a universal quest of humankind. There is no one on the face of this earth who does not desire inner peace. It is not a desire of our times, it is a desire of all times. Human beings, regardless of their societies, their religions, their races, geographical locations, the era they were born in, or their level of technological advancement, they all search, we all search for inner peace. Now people have taken a variety of different paths to try to achieve it. Some have tried to achieve it through the accumulation of material possessions. Others through drugs, others through music, yet others through meditation, through husbands and wives, through their jobs, their careers. Others try to find it through the success of their children, but the search goes on. In our time, we have been made to believe that through technology and modernization we would attain a level of creature comfort, physical comfort in life, and that should equal peace. But if we look at the statistics concerning adult Americans, America being the most advanced technologically, etc., of the countries, we see that 20 million adult Americans suffer from depression yearly, which is the leading cause of disability. In 2000, the year 2000 in the U.S., the death rate due to suicide was double that of AIDS. Though we hear about AIDS all the time, people are talking about AIDS, but suicide is double. And it was also more than homicides. When we think of murder, what is going on in the cities, the big cities, that's what we hear about. But suicides, it doesn't even make it to the newspaper. But that's the reality. Technology and modernization has not brought peace to the society. I think that to a large degree, many of us mistake personal pleasure from, for inner peace. I mean, this is what we're looking for in drugs. We achieve elements of pleasure, or it may be in sexual relations, or in music, or meditation. We get a pleasurable feeling. But is that really peace? And it doesn't last. It comes for a while and it goes. And so the quest continues. So peace really is something 
in most of our lives something which is very elusive. We can't seem to get our hand on it. Yes, we get pleasure. We are pleased with things from time to time, but a sense, a real sense of inner peace, which transcends the difficulties and the trials, etc., of life, we can't seem to achieve it. Peace is not something which is going to exist in this world around us. Because when we define peace in international or national terms in Webster's new 20th century dictionary, it's called freedom from war or civil strife. And where do we have that? There's always a war going on somewhere. Or if we look at it in terms of state, na nation, or city, freedom is from, uh, peace is freedom from public disturbance or disorder, public security, law and order. Where do we have that? Where is there law and order? And if we look at it on a family level, or the job level, freedom from disagreement or quarrels, harmony, even in our own families, we have arguments, we have quarrels, etc. In terms of a location, yes, we can have a place that is calm and quiet and tranquil, but even the most tranquil of places, islands in the West Indies, of, uh, of Africa or India or the Philippines, Indonesia. Beautiful islands. For small amounts of time, they're very calm and yes, there is tranquility there, but then comes the hurricane. So that external peace, it only exists for very small portions of time. The reality of human life is that, as Allah said, in the 90th chapter, verse 4, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ I've created human beings in toil and struggle. That's the reality. The reality of the life in which we live. It's a life of tests. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ well, Jewel, as Allah said, will test you, try you with something of fear and hunger, loss of wealth. So give glad tidings to those who are patient. So to deal with our circumstances, the circumstance of toil and struggle in which we live, patience is the key. But if we go back to the peace, that we are looking for. And patience cannot manifest itself if we don't have that inner peace. We have to identify the obstacles in our lives and remove them. The obstacles which prevent us from achieving a maximum inner peace. We're living in a world of toil and struggle, but yet within ourselves, it is possible to attain inner peace. Peace with that environment, that world in which we live. To do so, we have to, as I said, remove the obstacles. In order to do so, we have to develop some kind of a strategy. It will not come just by thinking we need to remove them, we have to develop some steps. How do we go about removing these obstacles so we can achieve what is possible of inner peace? The first step is that we have to identify the obstacles themselves. We have to be aware of them because if we cannot identify the obstacles in our lives, then how can we remove them? So first step, identify the obstacles. Second step, we have to accept them as obstacles. So we may identify anger 
as an obstacle from inner peace. If a person is anger, in, in, in anger, he's worked up, or she is, you know, blown a fuse, gone ballistic, how can you have an inner peace in that kind of a circumstance? Not possible. So we all recognize that anger is an obstacle for inner peace. But if your next response is, yeah, it's an obstacle, but I don't get angry, then you have a problem, right? Because you have not accepted that obstacle as your problem. So you're in a state of what they call self-denial. You deny that it's an obstacle. So you can't clear it. You can't remove it. You can't deal with it. If we look at the obstacles in life, in human life, we can put them under a variety of headings, under personal problems, family issues, financial dilemmas, work pressures, spiritual confusion. These are some big headings. And there are many, 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 many issues under them. We have so many problems, so many obstacles, that they're like illnesses. If we try to deal with them one by one, we'll never get through them. We have to deal with them as they come. We need to identify, put them in some general categories and tackle them as a group as opposed to trying to tackle each individual obstacle and problem. To do that, we have to remove first obstacles which are beyond our control. We have to be able to distinguish in our lives which obstacles are within our control and which ones are beyond our control. The ones which are beyond our control, we perceive them as obstacles, but really they're not. These are the things which Allah has destined in our lives. They are not really obstacles, but we have misinterpreted them as obstacles. For example, in this time, one might find oneself born black in a world which favors white people over black people, or born poor in a world that favors the rich over the poor, born short or born fat born crippled, born in a variety of different ways. These are things which were beyond our control. We didn't choose which family to be born into. We didn't choose which body to be, our spirit to be blown into. This is not our choice. So whatever we find of those kind of obstacles, then we just have to be patient with them. Realize that they're in fact not really obstacles. And function according to what Allah told us in Surah Al-Baqarah. Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. Perhaps you might dislike something and it is really good for you. That's the bottom line. Wa asa an tuhibbu shay'an wa huwa sharrun lakum. And perhaps you may love something and it's evil for you. So this obstacle which we perceive beyond our control, we dislike it. We want it to change. And some people spend a lot of money. Michael Jackson, classical example. You know, he was born black in a white world, but you know, he said, hey, you know, I, I got money, I'm going to try to change this. Right? But it didn't give him what he was looking for. So inner peace can only be achieved if at least the obstacles which are beyond our control, we accept them as a part of Allah's destiny and accept them patiently. Because there's two things. We can accept them as a part of Allah's destiny, but we can be impatient with them.